Everybody, welcome to our culture gaming. I'm a slightly ill Scott Tailford, but I've been siphoned off into a separate room to avoid infecting the local populace. So, what better thing to while away the hours than play a whole bunch of Call of Duty Mobile? Now, although I've only had a good three to four hours hands on time so far, I'm gonna say that it's surprisingly good. There are so many ways that Activision could have totally, for want of a better word, shagged this. And although I fully expect them to nickel and dime us going forward, right now, Call of Duty Mobile is exactly what you think it is, and that's pretty great. Now, interestingly, this is developed by Tencent, the slowly taking over the gaming industry when you weren't looking Chinese conglomerate, but damn if they don't continue to work miracles on phones. PUBG Mobile was a similar case of, yup, this somehow works back in February 2018, and with Call of Duty Mobile, they've seemingly pulled off the impossible yet again. Needless to say, COD on the go feels brilliant, and to get the most out of it, we'd best get to sharing advice as much as possible. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and this is Call of Duty Mobile, 14 tips and tricks the game does doesn't tell you. Number 14, you're playing against bots until level 7, then all humans level 10 onwards. Now this thing is kind of like the way that PUBG rolls out. Obviously the game's going to be played by a whole bunch of more casual players or first timers to games like Call of Duty or PUBG or whatever, so the vast majority of matches that you get into on those first few levels is actually filled with bots. You can kind of tell they're just standing around waiting for you to shoot them, but it means that you get massive killstreak bonuses and you get a feel for the way that Call of Duty is going to play when you actually get good at the game overall, only to slowly trickle in human players until you get to around level 10 when you're going up against all humans the whole time. You'll know because you'll start dying a whole lot more. Number 13, do not forget to claim your unlocked items. So I went a massive amount of time, a good, I don't even know, 20 matches before realizing that there's a tiny little icon on the main menu hiding all sorts of unlockable rewards, the sort of things that have been triggering after each match and you just need to tap on it and you have a whole load of stuff that you can claim. It's based on headshots and killstreaks and downing X number of team members or whatever. It's this little, it's this little thing, this little thing on the side. Now we'll animate that so you can see it better, but I totally missed that for the vast majority of my playtime. And maybe that just means that I'm a big moron, but you shouldn't be. Number 12, slide by crouching while sprinting. So in an effort to bring across every single option that you have in the console Call of Duties, you can slide while you're sprinting. You just need to make sure that you tap the crouch button after you've locked in the sprint. Now I'll get on to running options and stuff later, but don't think that they haven't thought of everything. They've tried to bring across at least the majority of your tactical options when playing the full game. And I love me some sliding and some shooting, so it's good. Number 11, you can relocate all the touch controls. Another thing brought across from PUBG Mobile is that you can hop into the game settings and go on custom layout and then just literally move all the objects, all the different quote unquote buttons to wherever you think they're gonna be most effective. So although I love the advanced control scheme, sometimes you just wanna tweak stuff so that it's easier or more comfortable, maybe putting the buttons towards the outside of the screen if you're a bigger person and you don't wanna cover that much of the screen, just trying to shoot back. Number 10, play with headphones. A Call of Duty staple since like 2007 when it really blew up and everyone was buying those Turtle Beach, Turtle Bay, remember them from back in the day? Play with headphones. If you're playing Call of Duty, play with headphones. The amount of extra kills that you'll get just by hearing other players' footsteps or them moving around near you is exponential in the long run. Just play with headphones. Number nine, use advanced aiming. Now, the two control schemes that COD Mobile has are kind of interesting. Um, the simplified one means that you just need to move the camera over someone and then tap the button for it to auto-shoot um, if it hasn't already. Um, or you can use the advanced aiming, which I totally think is the way to go. It means that you can kind of juggle being able to zoom in with your right thumb and then fire off some shots independently with your left thumb. I know it sounds crazy. It sounds like the most counterintuitive thing and little Ewan's face was really scrunched up when I tried to tell him that zooming with the right thumb was the right way to go but for me advanced aiming is the way you don't want to be relying on an ai to auto shoot especially with the amount of lag that can come from actually playing on the go number eight practice engaging in firefights against ai now it's super easy to miss in the whole rush of oh my god i can play call of duty and all my friends can too but once you tap on the multiplayer option go to the bottom right and look at all the different options that you have for matchmaking one of them is literally called practice against ai and you're going to need to do that you're going to need to put some time into reconfiguring your brain coming across from controllers or keyboard and mouse or whatever to get used to touch controls i just totally recommend hopping into the ai mode and just practicing some headshots or practicing moving and aiming on the go sliding while firing things like that go up against the ai I rack up a body count and then hop into the actual PvP. Number seven, you can fire underwater. 
The maps released so far don't include any bodies of water that you can get underneath and flank other players, but if you're playing the Battle Royale mode, you totally do. And once you hop into the water, down on, I was gonna say the D-pad, down on your touchy, floaty analog stick, we need a name for it, left side of the screen, will make you go underwater. And you can actually just get some shots off, just literally hiding underwater and just pew pewing from underneath. Other players won't see you there and you can get the drop on them. If you end up in the water against another player or a handful of players, just duck underneath and fire from below. Number six, go prone by holding crouch. This totally might be in the game and maybe I just missed it, but it's a very quick tip. Just hold the crouch button to go completely prone. I totally had a player just crawling through a map this morning when I was playing, which like is hilarious. But the more you play, the more that skill level is going to get higher and you're going to need to exploit things like playing the angles game, which I'm going to get to, or just going prone and waiting it out, picking your spot and knowing when to fire. Something like going prone is essential, especially if you're playing Battle Royale and you just need to know that you need to hold down the crouch button to do it. Number five, lock into a sprint by sliding upwards. This sounds kind of weird, but it's totally the same control scheme feel that uh, PUBG had. If you're moving using your left thumb, if you start swiping upwards, it's very easy to miss um, because your thumb might obscure the thing on screen, but there is another icon that appears when you're moving. If you slide your thumb upwards and leave it on that icon, you can lock your character into a front sprint. This makes it a lot easier to like cover big distances on the map whilst you're looking around and taking some pot shots or just moving into a slide and continuing a chain of movement. Number four, mantle up the environment for great vantage points. Now, Josh Brown told me I shouldn't say this because it's really super obvious, but I totally played a bunch of matches not realizing that, of course, you can jump and climb. So I'm going to mention it. If you're a new player, you're new to Call of Duty, or you're just, you know, your brain's frazzled from trying to play a console game on a phone and not realizing that they have brought across the vast majority of things that you might want to do, just use the jump button when you're climbing up something or when you're facing a chest high wall and you can mantle up it. I use this on a whole bunch of maps to get the drop on various enemies and I totally think it's a worthwhile thing to do. Screw you, JB. Screw you. Number three, gyro aiming is a whole other level. Although personally, I'm not massively sold on gyro aiming, tons of people keep telling me that it's the way to play. In Call of Duty Mobile over on Reddit, someone called Ishizaka Land actually found out that if you go into the options, you can go to basic settings and tweak the gyroscope so that you can turn it up all the way to something like 120 and have an extremely responsive way to play. They recommend just knocking all the lights off and getting completely immersed in the screen in front of you and literally just moving around almost like a quasi VR experience because at least that means that your reaction times and general movements can be replicated one to one in the game. Give it a shot. Maybe it's a way that you want to play. And if you've came across from something like Splatoon 2 or whatever, can't think of any other gyroscope shooters off the top of my head, maybe it's the way to go. Number two, keep an eye on event rewards. Another thing to do frequently if you're forever ticking off the boxes of your personal rewards is to keep an eye on the left-hand side of the main menu as that's where all the live service stuff happens. That's where Tencent and Activision are pushing daily challenges, various events that are happening around the world at the time, and at the time of recording, there's a one going on called Light Up the World that will give you more unlockables if you're playing alongside the entire world at the time. Weekly challenges, XP boosts, login rewards, daily challenges, weekly challenges, all this stuff is all in one place. And again, it seems super simple, but this stuff is so easy to miss because Call of Duty Mobile's general UI is just full of random things in all sorts of directions. So be sure that you're on the lookout for the most notable rewards. And number one, play the angles game. So combining everything that I've been over before from practicing against AI bots to going prone to generally just trying to play the console version of Call of Duty on a phone, you really want to take advantage of the environment itself. A whole bunch of my kills have both been staying on the move and being confident when engaging players one on one and just making sure that you're memorizing the vast majority of the maps. They'll come to you over time and you'll know exactly where you can take vantage points, where you can hunker down, where you can wait for players to come in, where you get used to where people are going to be spawning. All of this stuff starts to come together and in terms of a general phrase for the mentality that you want to be in, you need to be thinking about playing the angles game. Where can you get the drop on another player? What kind of advantages can you free up for yourself? Essentially, how can you play Call of Duty the way that we've always been doing, but on a phone? And that's my rundown of various tips and tricks that I've picked up while playing, and I cannot wait to see what else you guys come up with. As a side note for the comments too, what do you guys think of this influx of full games now on mobile? Part of me wants to be ecstatic that Mario Kart, PUBG, and now Call of Duty are all just on phones, but the cynic or realist in me doesn't exactly trust mobile gaming one bit and is only really waiting for things to go wrong. Let me know where you're at, and for those of you who've played longer, how have you found Call of Duty Mobile's grind over time? For now, though, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast, as no doubt we'll be picking this game apart a ton going forward, and I'll catch you soon.